Hi everyone, and welcome to this quick tutorial which is going to show you how to uh, recreate piling, perhaps from a contractor, um, utilising Dynamo. So before we get going, let's take a look at some of the uh, data that I've got here. So if I go into an Excel sheet here, you can see that I've got um, a simple sheet. So we have pile number in here. We have the easting and northing setting out data. I have level information, also the depth of the pile and the diameter of the pile. Okay, also, if we take a look at the structural foundations here, um, I have a pile created, an in-situ pile. And in here, if I just go to um, edit type in here, we look at type properties, you can see I've got material set up. I think I've actually built those as instance properties. Let's take a look. Yep, so in here I have a pile depth of 6 metres and a pile diameter of 300. But obviously I'll be driving those or wanting to drive those with the Excel sheet. Okay, so let's now start up uh, Dynamo. So I'm going to the Addings ribbon and here I'm using Dynamo 0.9. Obviously the version does matter because if you use older versions of Dynamo, some of the nodes I'm about to use might not be available. So we'll start up Dynamo and we'll create a new graph. Okay, so here we have it, and really our starting point is going to be to get the data from Excel. I like to um, type in a search up here, and you can see I've just typed in Excel, and you can see I've got two options here, I can either read or write to Excel. So obviously here we want to pull data from Microsoft Excel, so here's my node. What I now need is an input, so if I type in file path, you'll notice here I have the input. And in here, I've now got a browse button. So let's go ahead and browse for our sheet. So in this case, it's piling. Okay, so that's now found the file path. Now, what we need to do here is we need to actually have an intermediate node here, file from path. And what that will do, if I wire this together, just use a preview here, you can see it's now pulled out the uh, path. And I can now wire that directly into the file node. So we now need to actually grab the sheet name. Now, this is really a string here. So I can type in uh, input string up in here. And in this example, it's going to be sheet one. And again, we can wire that in. So that's now um, read the spreadsheet. And if we just, uh, I'm going to put it into manual run at the moment. Okay, so you can see I've got a null piece of data here for the minute, um, so I've probably made some sort of a typing error here. Let's run that again. Yep, and you can now see we added a space in there. So with that space, you can now see that Dynamo is reading the data, and it's putting out a list. Now this is like a nested list, so you can see we've got a sublist here, list 0, list 1, list 2, and so on. Now. One of the things we're going to need to do is actually segregate the list here because you can see the first part of the list is actually um, heading data, which is important for the spreadsheet so we understand what we're looking at, but not so useful for Dynamo. So in this case, we're going to want to um, drop items. So what you can do, you can type in list here, and you can see that we've got all sorts of different um, nodes down in here, and really what we want to do here is drop items. So we can feed the data into here. And we want to drop items by, well, we want to basically just get one of one uh, item in there. So I'm just going to use a code block here. You can get a code block just by double clicking in the background of Dynamo. Uh, it just so just happens to keep using numbers and integers and things. So I'll just type in one semicolon, and that's really created a um, simple number one in there. If I just run that, you can see that. And I can now wire that in. So again, if I run this and we take a look at the output, you'll now notice that it's actually got rid of the heading data here and we're now starting to look just at that raw data. Now, really what I want to do is I want to now get all the lists together so I get all the numbers together, so P1, P2, P3, all the eastings together and all the northings together. So what we can do is actually take this um, list as it stands at the moment and just to help you understand this, if I go into Excel, what's happening at the moment is Dynamo is reading across these rows. Okay, so if you look at the rows there, the output, you can see it's reading across them. What I actually want to do is tell Dynamo to actually read down columns. So I want to transpose. So let's take a look at that. So we're still in the list um, area here. 
and you can see I've got a node here called transpose so we'll take this through and I'm now going to pass that information into list transpose and then run again one of the things you'll um, very quickly learn about Dynamo is lists are really the backbone of the software so you really need to understand what lists are doing so you can now see that I have a series of lists here and it's we've now transposed these so I'm now looking at column data right so now what we want to do is we want to start to pull out these sublists if I just collapse these you can see that we've got a number of these sublists in here and the first thing I might want to do is grab the pile number yep so that's going to be this one here so again that's another list function we've got um, a tool there called get item index so let's go and find that now again rather than uh, trying to find all these things you can just type in get item perhaps okay here we are and I want the index 0 to start with so we'll wire that together and now we can get the uh, list in there and again I'll run that you can now see I've got a single flat list there with all the palm numbers in. You can actually uh, rename these nodes as well just to help us um, see what we're looking at a bit later on. So I'm going to type in here palm number so I actually know that that's the palm number node in there. Okay we now need to repeat that a few times for the rest of the data so rather than keep creating these nodes all the time I can just create simple copies in here. So that's going to be the easting, the northing, and the pile diameter. So this string of data here is going to be from code block 1. This one will be code block 2. Let's just check what we're looking at there. Um, there's the level in there. And we've got the depth as well. So that will be number 3 in there. Sorry, it won't be number 3. I actually want... Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yep. Okay, and again, we can run these just to see what we're looking at there. So there we are. So this one is pile uh, diameter. So we can just rename that. And of course here, I think we're looking at the east and the northing. We are. So we can rename this one. Easting. And northing. Okay, so we now have all of our raw data out. So we now need to actually start to look at um, what we can actually do with this raw data. Now we're going to have a pending problem starting with this really, because what's happening is obviously these um, coordinates are actually in, um, well it's, it's, it's geo-referenced, and the problem is if we actually bring these very large numbers into Revit, some of you may already know that if you go more than 20 miles outside the project base point, that's going to cause um, massive problems with degradation and issues with graphics and so on. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to basically um, use a, transpo a, a transpose routine to actually transpose the coordinates into sensible values. So if I go back into Revit here before we go too far with Dynamo, I'm going to go into um, Site category here and we'll select project base point so at the moment you can see that zero zero so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one of the pile coordinates as my setting out point and I'm just going to choose to uh, grab the first one in the list here just as an example yep, so that's going to go into the easting and then we want another one to go into the northing which is this one here okay and we'll paste that in okay so that's now my setting out point yep so all of my piling is going to now be in, in relation to this. Now when you insert things with Dynamo it doesn't actually use the project base point at all. It uses the default uh, insertion point which is still back in 0, 0. So what I'm going to do here now is basically use a transpose tool. So in here I'm going to get that same northern and easting. So here's the easting. So we'll add that in going with the semicolon. I'll rename these as well, it's quite useful to actually name these so you understand what we're looking at. And then we'll create another code block and this is going to be my northing. And that goes there. And we'll rename this one. That's going to be northing. 
Okay, so there are our two um, setting out points at the moment. What we now need to do is we now need to grab our um, east and west values in here and we need to put them into a bit of a formula really. So let's create the formula first. So I'm going to use a code block for this. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab our existing coordinate and you can see here I'm typing in some formula. And when you do that, that's asking for an input called EC. Yep. And I'm going to make another one in here. So that we've got EC and we'll have SC perhaps, yep, which is going to be my actual coordinate. Okay, so let's now get these values and wind them in. So the existing coordinate is going to be from our easting. We'll do the easting first. Okay, and we'll now grab the easting here and put that into that node there. So if I run these, you can see that we've now got that value there. So what we now need to do is put in a bit of a formula here. So in this case, what we're actually after here is the EC, and we want to now divide that, oh, sorry, take that away from SC. Okay, we can get rid of that bit in there. Right, so now if we run that, yeah, you can see what it's done is it's actually taken my list and it's transpo it transformed it, yeah, transposed it a little bit. Okay, so now everything's in millimeters but relative to that zero, zero point. So I can now repeat that. So we'll take that same code block, it's actually the same formula of course, isn't it? It doesn't change. Okay, now we can wire in um, this one into here. And this one, oops, wrong one, it's the northing I want, isn't it? So I want the northing uh, into here. Okay, let's run that. So now, yep, we've got everything we kind of need in there. I've wired them around the wrong way. Worth checking the values, as you can see there. So that needs to go in there. Let's run that again. There we are. Yep, so we can now see that's, that's all looking much better. Okay, so we've now got some uh, fairly sensible values. Now what we need to do is we now need to basically be able to insert one of our family types, which is our piling. So up here, we can type in um, family types. And what that will do is that will just give us a very simple selection box here where we can go and um, select a particular family type. I'm just going to maximize this. So now we've got to go and find that. So that was called, I think it called it in situ pile. There we are. There it is. And now we've got some of the data, or most of the data we need to actually go ahead and be able to insert this. Now my Z level, I want to actually be correct, so I'm going to take the, um, the Z level directly through uh, in there. Um, I haven't actually got the Z level at the moment, so let's just remind myself of where that is. So that's 0, 1, 2, 3. Yep. So that's index 3. So we'll take this information here. Okay. And that's going to be index 3. Okay, and I'll just rename this, so we'll just call this one Z level in there. And let's just run that just to check that we've got the right one, which we have. Right, so now what we want to do now is create a family instance by coordinates. So in here we can type in family instance, and you can see we've got by point and so on in here. So here we have by coordinates. So now we should be able to wire all this data together. So we have our family type in here. We have the X, which is the easting, the Y, which is the northing, and the Z level. So let's run that now. Okay, and you can now see there's a bit of a delay, obviously Revit in the background, hopefully, should be modeling our information. So let's take a look at this in 3D. Okay, and you can now see we have some piling yeah, actually shown there. Okay, now the problem is at the moment I haven't actually got any marks in my piles at all. So what we want to do is now grab all of those marks and start to work with those. <coughs> so this is really dealing with the metadata that we've um, already pulled out of the information here. So again, we need we, we need to actually now grab that pile number which we've got there. And in this example, we want to now um, be able to basically set a parameter. Yeah. Now to do this, 
we're going to do it by element. So in here, we can type in element. That's going to deal with things at an element level. Yeah, and we want to set parameter. Yeah. Okay, whoops, my typing is not working very well. Okay, set parameter by name. So there we have the node. Right. Okay, and I'll just move this down this way a little bit now. So we can now take that pile number, which is this one here, and that's going to be the value. The parameter name is mark. So again in here, we can just type that in. Just make sure I'm getting the right, uh, right one there. So I've just used a code block instead of a string this time, but you could have obviously used a string as well. And then we want the actual elements. Now the elements are going to be wired from the family instance output here to the input here. So let's now run that again. And we'll go back into Revit. And now we'll select one of these piles. And we can now see that we have our mark actually burnt in there as well. Okay, and obviously there we could do a very similar thing for um, any other metadata or any of the um, depths and so on that we wanted to take through. Um, okay, so that's given you hopefully a, a, a bit of a simple example about how we can take existing data, put it through Dynamo to actually generate um, the, the pining perhaps from the contractor. Okay, hope you found that useful and speak to you soon. Take care.